It's time for another Dice Tower review from Gamer's Remorse. All right. Hello and welcome back to Gamer's Remorse. Today we are playing the game Grifter, currently on the Game Crafter. Where you craft games. And grift. Errs. <laughs> Grifter is a two to four player game in which players take on the roles of con men and women, attempting to pull the ultimate heist. Players will begin the game by separating all the cards into three decks, the grifters, the plots, and everything else. Players are each given a random grifter, each with their own special ability and a starting hand. They will then take turns playing opportunities, plots, businesses, and marks, while attempting to keep the other players from doing so, with the end goal of starting their turn with one of each card in play, and thus being declared the King of Crooks, the Sultan of Swindlers, the Monarch of Mockery, the Prince of... Well, you get the deal. Since we are playing at two players, we will shuffle the plot cards in with everything else. I am Philip Dodger. I am Philip Dodger. <gasps> what? I'm actually Grigor Romanov that looks surprisingly like a woman. Once on each of my turns, I may discard one opportunity card from my hand and look at the top four cards of the contact. Oh, wow. I may add two of these revealed cards to my hand, put the rest back on the top of the contact in any order. So anyways, I am Philip Dodger. Once on each of my turns, I can discard one business card from my hand, and I can search the contact for a single card and add it to my hand, then I reshuffle the deck after. We're each dealt a starting hand. See how I did that? Yeah. So it is. Classic grift. All right, and then the oldest player, the one who convinces the other player they are the oldest, begins. I'm 57. You can tell, because I have a beard. cards are you drawing? I drew two, because I'm okay. the oldest. Okay. You, you like that? Like, I didn't even argue. I was just like, yeah. <laughs> like, okay. I'm not I'm even starting. acknowledge that. I'm beginning. Starting. Yeah. Okay. I see how it is. Let's hold a, us elderly folk do it. See how it is? Yeah. You we old, don't even, <laughs> we don't even talk about it. You old coots. Honestly, if you were to dress up like a cop and just start arresting people, people would be like, oh, that's reasonable. He's a cop. How did you know what I did last week? I yeah. mean, I didn't want to talk about it. Okay. You'll have okay. that. All right. So, in my... <laughs> Turn, I drew up two, and then I begin. So you place down what? An opportunity, a mark, and a business. And then underneath the opportunity, you put down a plot. Yep. Face down. Morphed, if you're an old school magic player. Here's a business, and your turn, Brian. All right, I am going to start my turn by drawing two <laughs> I don't cards. have much to do. I am going to play a mark. Ooh. And I'm going to play an opportunity with a face down plot card. Morph it as a 2 2. I can pay it. No, it's magic. <laughs> um, the win condition is to have a mark, an opportunity, and a business in play. All I am missing is the business. Oh, hey, Sean, what's that you have there? A business card? Mm -hmm. Too bad I can't take it. I am going to play a friends in low places because I got friends in low places. 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 I don't listen to country music, so I just Riff butchered a song that people probably like. So I got to draw the top card. All right, go ahead, Sean. All right, I draw. Bedazzle me. Bedazzled. Draw up two cards. All right, I'm going to do this one. Draw two cards from the con deck or draw one card at random from your opponent. I'm going to draw two from the con deck. Good choice, good choice. I'm going to play the pigeon dip. Sounds like a dance. dance. Yeah. Pigeon dip. Target Pigeon opponent dip. reveals their hand to me. Any one card revealed, I get to add it to my hand. I have two friends in high places. A fiddle game. Mm -hmm. And a knock his bluff. I will take this one. Look. Or you can just take that one. <laughs> Which is the fiddle game. I, I can't play anything, so your turn. All right. I am going to draw two cards. I am going to play... Advising. Mm. I am going to let you go. 
So you have all three. I have so all three. So if at the beginning of the next turn, you win. You win I Zords. I do win Zord. All right, so I draw up two. I'm gonna play this one to draw two cards from the deck. Oh, snap. I guess I'll play a mark. I'll play the Pigeon Dip, which again lets you reveal your entire hand to me and I get to pick one to keep. I still have two friends in high places. I still I'll have the knock and I have a con. <laughs> I'm going to play an Opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to play Business, which discard this card from your hand, swap one of your unrevealed plot cards of the plot area of another player. So, before you do that, okay, I am going to play Knock His Bluff. So, opponent reveals an unrevealed plot card currently in their scam area. Can't you only play that on your turn? It's a retort. Oh, it's a retort? Hold on now. Cancels the effect of a trick card that was just played. Okay. So that said, resume. So this one goes over here. And this one goes over there. <clears throat> but wait, but wait for it. My special ability as this grifter, I get to discard an opportunity card, grab the top four cards. Are you serious? And then pick two and discard the other two on top. That was go on top. <clears throat> This one, knock his bluff. Opponent reveals any unrevealed plot card currently in their scam area. If the revealed card is a true, they can reveal one of their unrevealed plot cards in your scam area. Boom, boom, boom. And so the, since that's a con, it gets discarded with the opportunity. I have this business card, which says discard this card from your hand, search the con deck for any trick card of your choice and add it to your hand. Uh, I'm gonna play an opportunity card. And I'm gonna play a Friends in High Places to steal one unrevealed plot card from an opponent and add it to my hand. I'm gonna cancel the trick. <laughs> can I play another trick card? Yeah, you can play as many tricks. I'm cards gonna as play you want. Friends in High Places, steal a random unrevealed plot card from an opponent's plot area and add it to my own. So I draw up two. Yep. Okay, so I'm gonna play that. I'm gonna play that. Yes, I'm gonna discard an opportunity card to draw up for your turn. You win. I win! Yay! <laughs> Sorry, that was kind of lackluster, that, folks. That was an unclimactic finish. It really was. Which I feel is what this game feeds. All right, now we're going to go ahead and review Grifter. Yep. Uh, a card game on the Game Crafter. Um, what do you think, Brian? Jumping into the rubric, the visuals, I gave that between zero and two. I gave that one and a half. Uh, I enjoyed the old etching style. Uh, it's mm -hmm. very sketched. I liked that the people looked like people out of the era. Uh, some of the marks, I mean, Todd and Jake are my favorites. The facial hair on them is <laughs> fantastic, and I am a man who enjoys facial hair. Um, but I enjoyed those. However, I did not get .5 because the card backs are all the exact same. Mm -hmm. um, which to a degree makes sense, but when you have to then sort the cards based on the number of players, that can be tedious. Uh, the grifters, uh, you, you could just say, hey, you don't play with the extra grifters, give them their own card back. You could say the same with the plots, um, because then having to sort through them before and or after each game can be tedious and something that you just don't want to do. Skill and luck, between zero and one, I give that a 0.5. Uh, it's a very luck-based game, uh, drawing, what have you. But then there is some skill in when you play what you play. But if you never draw an opportunity card, I drew uh, one business card, for example, for the entire game. Uh, had I have not drawn a business card, Sean could have won before I ever had a chance of winning. Same with marks. I only drew one mark for the entire game. Um, whereas my character's special ability required business cards. So not once was I able to use my special ability, whereas Sean was able to use it multiple times to great effect. Pacing zero to two, I give that one and a half. It is fairly well paced, especially in a two player game, because as they're playing, you're trying to counter what they play, or you're planning your next turn. If you're playing three to four players, it could allow more room for analysis paralysis, which could take away some of the fun from the game if you're sitting here watching two other people interact and you're just sitting here waiting for your turn. A theme and immersion between zero and two, I give that a one. I understand you know you're a grifter, you're trying to con people, so you have a mark. You have an opportunity on that mark and you're using a business. Uh, but at the same time, I didn't feel like I was conning anybody. 
Mm -hmm. uh, those thematic elements were missing from what I was hoping to see. Then the mechanics, zero to one, I give that a 0.5. I would have liked to see uh, more of that conning. I would like to see, you know, how could I trick my opponent? How can I make him think things are happening that weren't happening? Mm -hmm. uh, I would love to see conning coming in through the gameplay, finding a way to introduce conning into a solid mechanic. The only aspect where conning would have been used was the face-down plot cards. Um, but traditionally, if you are using those, you know what yours is, and you're using the one you put there to mess them up. And then was it fun? Zero to two, I gave that a one. It was enjoyable, but I wouldn't see myself pulling this out very often, saying, hey guys, here's a fun card game, let's play it. But at the same time, it is a very standalone small pack of cards. All in all, I gave it six out of 10. Uh, Sean, what were your thoughts? Overall, I thought it was a, a pretty fun game, actually. As Brian had said, there's not a lot of games out there that uses the idea that you're essentially a person out there, a scammer, if you will, trying to uh, make a ruse happen. You need a mark, you need the opportunity, and you need the business to ensure that all of it works together. And that was really cool to see. I thought all of the elements were there. I thought it was pretty well carried out. The only downside, as Brian had said, is some of the components were perhaps lacking. For instance, all of them have the same back. I realize that was probably easily done just because you probably want all of the same cards as the same artwork on the back just to make sure it's uniform, but it makes it a pain to set up because you kind of need to know ahead of time um, which ones the grifters are, etc. However, at the same time, if you're going to shuffle these into the main card deck, you can't have them with a different background. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there was something subtle you could do, but it made it a pain to set up the game. Yeah. When you get these games from the Game Crafter, they're all shuffled in, so you need to go through each one, and if it's a 54 card deck, that's 54 cards you're going through to find all the grifters. Okay, now it's... 50 cards you need to go through to find all of the opportunities. I mean, it just seemed like a bit much. Interesting, I liked it, but it, it, it's hard to describe. All right, anyway, quality components zero to two. I gave it a one for the reasons I said. The, the backs were a little bit rough. Uh, some of the images seemed a little bit different art style. So some of them appeared sketched, some of them appeared like wood, wood block uh, engravings, and other ones appeared to be almost cartoony. Good balance of skill deluxe, zero to one. I actually gave that a one. I thought it was pretty well balanced because you don't want a game where everyone starts off with a mark, a business, and an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Then there's no influx of, I guess, supply and demand, right? So if everyone has a supply, there's not a lot of demand other than prevent him from winning before I win. There was already a little bit of that, but it was cool going from turn to turn, not having all three. Uh, so I thought it was pretty well balanced. Uh, analysis paralysis, zero to one. I gave it a 0.5. I found that sometimes I was going towards analysis paralysis because I was trying to invent some grand scheme of card evolution to create Brian not having and me having, and I probably took much longer turns than what needed to be. Of course, that might be just my own constant trying to go faster. Um, but just so you know, if you play with some AP players, could take a little bit longer than what you would like. Theme, zero to two, I gave it a one. I really liked the theme. I thought it was fun that it was kind of old timey. I kind of did feel like a grifter, but at the same time, it's not terribly immersive just because you just have, you know, several different types of artwork that kind of describes the, the era, I guess, if you will. I don't know if I want to call it 1940s, 1950s, Great Depression sort of era. Uh, Thrill vs. Competitive 0-2, to two. I gave it a 1.5. I thought it was pretty competitive. I, I enjoyed it. Uh, I think I enjoyed it a lot more because it was so fast. It's not a game that you're going to spend an hour playing. It's more like a five-minute game, I would say. Uh, and was it fun? 1-2. to two. I gave it a 1.5. I really did enjoy playing this game. Um, and I feel like I can go out and scam some people now. So... Anywho, I gave it a 6.5. Uh, overall, I, I did enjoy it, and I would recommend it if you're looking for a very, very quick, light game. Um, yeah. So what did you give it again? I gave it a 6. 6, 6.5. 6.25 is our average. So if this game interests you, if you want to go out and scam some people without actually hurting anyone, play this game instead. Yep. So Preferably while watching Sting. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys.
Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Yeah. Yeah.